geekvs.com. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Weekly Games Chat. I am your host, Chris. As always, joined by my co-host, Sean. Hey, what's going on? And John. Hello. Roll Tide. It's going to keep getting listeners to not like us, Chris. I don't care. <laughs> Roll Tide. Roll Tide, indeed. Go dogs. Yeah, they did. They, they way, to, way to beat them Notre Dame. So now you like college football? It was a really good game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you could see the old head roll and death stare I just got. I'm married to a UGA fan. Yeah. I'm required to be a UGA fan <laughs> if Ouch. I want to live in that house. You're yeah. just not allowed to make your own choices, are That's you? That's not true. And the world is better for it. I don't endorse Ouch. that statement. Dang. What happened? No, I, if you ask me the secret to any successful marriage for mm-hmm. a man, uh-huh. do whatever the heck you're told. Dang. That's right, man. That's it. Sean. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> Hashtag equality. Um, <laughs> Do what you're told. <clears throat> uh, I'm so happy. Can, I'm I make, to, can I make a prediction for next weekend? I'm going to get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's that? I predict Lamar Jackson will beat Clemson next week. Mm. Remember, he almost did last year. And then that was with Deshaun wouldn't, Watson on there. Wouldn't that be a? Wouldn't that be their sec? No, did Clemson? Clemson did not lose. Okay, Clemson. They has, beat Auburn. Clemson has not lost in like it's not true since, since they, they lost, lost the game last year. Hmm? They lost the game last year. Who did they lose to? Somebody hack. Oh, NC State. Was I, that it? I'm gonna double check real quick. I didn't think they lost last year. I thought it was. They lost last year. I thought the last time they lost was to us in the national championship two years ago. Who's Maybe us? Were you Alabama in that game? Crimson did time. you play that game? Uh, this us fan. thing? Yep. Hey, they did beat South Carolina State. Like Why can't we just say nothing. the team I support instead of saying us? It's really bogus. I can't I can't stand that. Talk. Because we are Alabama Crimson Tide football. <laughs> where's your Where's your degree from Alabama? Uh, that's not required to be a fan of Crimson Tide football. Yes, it is. Oh. Did your wife graduate from UGA? Your wife. Oh! <laughs> Tell that to all the Notre Dame and Navy fans out there. Yeah, they were 14-1. and one. Ah, who did uh, they? Was it NC see. State or was it Florida State? Had to be one or the other. Why does? Why can't I pull anything up that shows last year? But it did. I did see they were 14-1. and one. I remember them losing kind of early. That's right. And then uh, they went undefeated the rest of the yeah, way. And they got really hot in the playoffs. Playoffs! Playoffs! <laughs> But yes, that's my pick. I, I'm I'm going with I, Lamar. I remember uh, I was closing a you know breaking down a gig, and uh, I popped it on the radio, ESPN Radio, finishing that game. And I remember because yeah. he got it was an overtime they won. Clemson did last year for the or per- really close to overtime. Uh, like a, they like pulled like, up in like the last, last seconds. two minutes of like yeah. yeah of the game. For the purpose of the layman, mm-hmm. who are you speaking of when you say Lamar? Lamar Jackson is the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, and if. You've watched him so far this year. He looks like a god among men. Wait, and what does I, he play? He plays quarterback, quarterback for Louisville. Louisville the Cardinals. Louisville, Louisville Cardinals. They're in Kentucky. Once, once home, possibly still home to Papa John Stadium. And old Bobby Petrino, former Atlanta Falcons head coach. Yeah. Are we so? He's, let's get our audience prepared and, and selfishly get me prepared. Okay. Are we going to do this for the next? 15 weeks. Sure, why not? Everything is broken out. Before we get started about talking about games, we're going to have to talk about this. I mean, it's technically Alabama game. won. I, I don't know how to respond to this. It's kind of unexpected. By responding, by opening up your it's mouth kind of and un- moving your stupid it's, lips, it's Sean of, Haywood. It's kind of unexpected. Jeez. Was that hostile? I don't, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> uh, and quite frankly. So mean. Quite, quite, fr- 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 quite, quite frankly. <laughs> it's, not, it's not to be tolerated, Jonathan. I'm sorry. It's quite mean. <laughs> you know he's serious he when he calls it. me Jonathan. Look, he does it, and I go, Chris, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? We're, we're going to lose people. And then you go, and then I, I go thought up. they lost somebody. Yeah. Let me Google. Then I say, roll tight, John. <laughs> roll tight. Chris, I can't not say it back, dude. <laughs> it, it just can't be stopped. You say roll tight. Roll tight. See? It just has to be done. 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, it's, yeah. like, it's like Pavlov's dog. You have to react to it. <clears throat> but yeah, prior to the show, you know, we also try to update you guys on what we did. Um, we found out that Chris went on a sabbatical. I did. I took a took about six days off from gaming, which is crazy, right? Chris, you've let this show down. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, um, I do that. Every couple of months, I have to every <laughs> month da- daily, John. Yeah, yeah there's a um, <laughs> there's a podcast we listen to, John and I, uh, the host of that show. He took off a month from like Twitter. He from yeah, he went from away from news and, and social news! media. News, oh, no, uh, completely. Uh, I am not ready to do that part of my life. Maybe at some point I will, though. That well, that is an interesting thing to do. So you listen to it, and somebody convinces you, I need to not game. No, it was more of like you know what. I wonder, you know, I, it's more of like I could do it right now. And it was a realization that really starting with this Friday is kind of when I start to go through, hey, about every week you got something, you know, yeah. that, that you could be playing. So it's like this Friday will be NBA 2K. And then like, you know, <clears throat> after that, yeah, maybe I get about a week or so with that. And then it's Cuphead. And then after that is Shadow of War, South Park. And then Mario Assassin's Creed and every other game that's coming I out. Also, want Mario Assassin's Creed. Dude. And then Call of Duty. Mario's just straight yoking people. <laughs> yeah, like it, it. It doesn't really let up until you know Woo-hoo! mid about <clears throat> mid November, right? Oh, so <laughs> it, it's like why not take a little <clears throat> detox before you have to go through that grind? Oh, because Destiny came out. Yeah, I don't care about that. <laughs> you did. Yeah, not really. <laughs> Maybe not. You say that now. At no. some point, you're going to have I, I a game. tried to, uh, I tr- without going too much, in, I tried to hype myself up, and I went back and I reread the plot and everything. I was like, you know what? I forgot. I'm good. <laughs> I'm it hurts I'm a little bit. Totally, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I tried to like NBA 2K <laughs> and Madden. You are oh. terrible at those, so I understand. Who won the last time we played at Madden, Chris? Why don't you come back into the arena? No, uh, Danny no, Deflection. No. Just yeah. tell me who won the last time you and I squared off on Madden. What's your record against me? Doesn't matter. Even if it's 1 in 22 like it is. What's that last one? That's like right. Clemson, everyone gets one. W. <laughs> uh, but anyways. Yeah, so I took a little bit of time off. Um, watched a lot of movies and stuff. And Oh, so you didn't like go outside. I did do that too. Uh, me and Penny, I was over at my parents' house for a good bit, and Penny was glad to have a backyard. So sweet. We went and played ball every day. That's good, man. Yeah, grilled out. Everybody doing okay? Everyone's good. John, you got any planes this weekend? Planes? Like, yeah. No. Because you didn't travel anywhere. Oh, no. we all were getting ready to for Irma. Do you want to die? <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, that was really what was going on this weekend. Yeah. back half of it yeah i even went so far as uh the storm hit us on monday this tuesday we usually record monday and i was so prepared for it that i made sure to put up a emergency recording on our site that would have gone live tonight <clears throat> had my power gone out and we were not able to what record did it, just say? it was just like hey we're not dead <laughs> We'll get to the show when we can. <laughs> Obviously, we're having technical difficulties due to the storm. That's oh, basically that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good looking. We had, yeah. In a in a large part, we got lucky that it wasn't as bad as maybe it could have been by the time we got here. Yeah. But we yeah. do know people, and there are pictures and sights and sounds from our area that some people weren't as lucky. Right. Trees that fell on cars into houses and roofs getting blown off, and but nowhere near the devastation like that Harvey put on Houston and or not Houston but the Texas area and then Irma. Irma did to other parts of yeah. uh, the South here. We got, but yeah, if you if you're if you listen to us and you got affected, man, we hope everything gets better for you guys quick. For sure, we know that sucks. I couldn't imagine losing power for days or not having food or my house being gone. Yeah, I can't imagine all my stuff being like. Uh, we have people who <clears throat> are from Florida staying in our city at our uh, civic center right now. And I can't imagine being there and knowing that, like, the storm has passed and you're still not even supposed to come back yet because they have to assess everything. And it could be probably weeks before yeah. you're going to get power back to your area. And yeah, it's I, I sent that 90-year-old couple, Irma and Harvey, a very strongly worded letter. It was just uh, That's a nice dad joke. So it's just me and Sean for the rest of the week. John? Hey. 
If that's where you, if you had left to go take a dump. <laughs> What's a dad joke? What dad you say? Joke? The jokes you give. <laughs> it's it's uh what? It's the kind of thing a dad says. You're almost forty years old. Are I'm you? not. I'm not even thirty five yet. What? Thank you. Yes. It's amazing. You can have some of my youth. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> yeah, John, I think I'm the one that that sentence was for. Mm. Mortality. <laughs> Can't slow it down. Oh, no. Right? Well, I'm officially downtrodden. Thanks, guys. So does that mean we can talk about Destiny 2 now? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> uh, let's do it. Topic time, 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 time. Topic is... Destiny 2. <laughs> It was a very pathetic intro. I'm not satisfied with it. Our, I'm sorry. Our, our you better intro? make this good. I'm going to let you down <laughs> in, in such an amazing way, John. Uh, it's going to be great. But yeah, Destiny 2 came out. Apparently, I'm the only oddball that played it. How is that even possible? That's a dad joke. Well, I mean... John, what, what was the other thing he always... That's what she said wrong? <clears throat> hmm? he, the other thing that he's like... You're like, that's what she said. Oh, yeah. It's not time to say that. That's what she said. <laughs> That's actually not bad. That was okay. Yeah, but yeah, Destiny 2 came well, out. If you think about it, like, there's three of us, right? Yeah. If one in three gamers, which is probably, I wouldn't be too surprised analytics. if that's, like, off. <laughs> His analytics for, for, is you know, for, like, PlayStation users, right? That would be, like, 20 million people, which is probably about right for the uh, first you just, sales of uh, Destiny. I wouldn't be surprised. Just, you, did you just compute all of that by yourself? It's well, see, there's sixty million PS4s, so one third would be twenty. Yeah. You think this is gonna sell twenty million? I think uh, it did. over I would say over both consoles. I think it already did. I think that's probably right. I mean, yeah. most of the Call of Duties at their height, they sell like what, thirty million? You said duty. On all. <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong, it could be a little bit less, but I would I would guess somewhere between ten to twenty million people will probably play it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's funny is on launch night, you were with us for a large portion of the night. I was, yeah. I went and hung out with you for a good yeah, bit we, there. We, we, we recorded. After we recorded here. Yeah. On, yeah, we all went and Chris hung out for a little while. We saw a friend of the show, Jeff, there who was a tired little boy. We had that one period where we had that conversation that just came out of left field. It was actually kind of interesting. We can't yeah. talk about it here. No. <laughs> it was, you would have loved to have heard it. And it had, it, it was politically driven, kind of ish yeah yeah it was just a, it was a interesting conversation it, yeah and then and then the turnout for the conversation in our circle was amazing right like whoa but like yeah, ryan the, leaf was there <laughs> and he's gonna steal your spot yeah uh yeah so at lunch today we're talking about destiny and and to when you hear this podcast the raid will be live yeah goes right. live tomorrow right yeah which is wednesday to, we're recording on tuesday because wednesday Irma, wednesday. wednesday and uh the light level is for you Destiny One people, um, is going to be around two eighty to three hundred, which is crazy. Uh, the light <clears throat> level for some people is really easy to attain. I'll get into more of that as I talk about it. But yeah, uh, unlike Chris, I started off on well, I wasn't on the hype train at all for Destiny Two. No, you were not. You were uh, not. <laughs> I was never on the hype and, train. And then at some <laughs> point, Chris nailed it. And he goes, "They're gonna, they're coming for you." They're going to yeah. get you all summer long. He was like, no, I'm done with destiny. And I've folks, you have to understand. I've, I've gamed with Sean for a good decade now. I know how this works. I've seen it. I've seen him try to refute so many things and I know the truth. And the, and the truth is this. If, if his friends, particularly two of them come for him, he is not going to hold up. That's right. He with, tries with a meager. Hey, I, I mean, sometimes I, him, I, I get him. I got him hyped for Metroid for a little while, but yeah. it's not going to happen. I've gotten really. him. I've gotten him thing, the, to buy what Metroid, the one that's coming out. <laughs> See, and there I don't, you go. It's what Metroid? No, what, See, yeah. what the the two D? Oh, I'm 3DS. definitely hyped for that. I just gotta <laughs> I gotta fashion myself a Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo. Yeah, you're just gonna get you a two DS. Yeah, but yeah, they they eventually they hit me. They recruited me hard. My intent letter Hard. changed and I declared for Destiny 2. 
Uh, so yeah, we, we went to the midnight release, which was not really a midnight release. It was kind of weird. The, um, the way they've been doing video games is, is you get it at early access at like nine. You can go finish up your, your stuff at the game store of like GameStop. It just makes more sense. Well, here's what I don't get. If, if you, um, say you digitally pre-order this game, correct? Like a lot of people did. You, you can go ahead and preload it, but it's not, you cannot play it until midnight. That's yeah. not a new concept. So that's pretty cool. So in my mind, why can't I go just pay for my game? It'd be my game, but it'd be kind of locked where I could go install any necessary updates and just not have it playable. I know that's that's a whole different beast because that's a whole different thing. They okay, do. so you're you talking just, about like you order it at GameStop. You, you order a physical copy. Yeah. So yeah, so we ordered it. We went and tightened everything up at 9. We couldn't pick up the game till 11, which was cool. Um, for those wondering about that initial update, it was 15 minutes, which was surprising for a game like Destiny that you almost felt like maybe they put it out when they ran it to print, maybe there were some stuff or some things they found in post that they needed to tighten up. Now, okay, so you had to do that. Mm-hmm. Did you still have to do the thing? Because <clears throat> my understanding was the big hubba blue or whatever you want to call it, hubba blue. <laughs> hubba blue. <laughs> whatever it's called. The big thing of problems, and I think it more so impacted the West Coast than it did the East Coast just because by the time they get you know on there, it's slammed already, right? Was... uh. You had to, after you did the initial installs and stuff, then you had to do it like where you get to the title screen and you do the download of like the content to the game. No. Like that, that was why I was understood. Like you had to log in and there was another download from no. there. Huh. Uh, when I logged in, I got had to get the update and I went straight to playing. Uh, matter of fact, we all got in a party. So and- you're saying you logged in. And then, like, you connect to the server and then you do a download? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah. Well, what, That's I, what, what I always about. do is when I put a game in, you can either hit start and then it'll say if it's got an update. I'm, I play on PS4 and mm-hmm. it'll either start doing the update. You okay. could continue offline if you wanted, but I went ahead and downloaded it. Uh, it was, it was like 15 minutes. It was ridiculously short. Um, so we were, we were able to be live and playing by, now keep in mind, if I picked it up at 11, mm-hmm. I, I had to drive home. I was live and ready to go by like 1140. Okay. So you were lucky, which was good because yeah. it was prior to midnight and, it, and the servers for the game had gone live. If you had a like physical copy, like nine or copy, and right? that was for the people that wanted to review it, right? Yeah. Is that what you told me? Uh, it went live for reviewers like early Monday. Yeah, that's usually what they do. And and all right, so I'm ready to play, and I, I understand now. Keep in mind, I was a huge Destiny One person, but I didn't yeah. really get into the last update, the Iron uh, Fist, I think it's called. No, no, that's a show. <laughs> the Iron <laughs> Iron Puppy. No, <laughs> that's a listener. That's funny. Uh, it's something. It was the Iron Maiden. No, I wrote. I, I don't remember. I'm on the spot right now, and I'm nervous. My palms are sweaty. They're really not spaghetti. And, yeah, <laughs> M&M, better. Better. Uh, so I, I'm spaghetti. playing it, and then everybody hops in our party because it's launch night. We're all super excited, and uh, it was a cluster for them. They were all you no. Know, there was apparently cluster you had a, what? Cluster. <laughs> cluster buster. Yeah, a fuster <laughs> cluck, John. <laughs> um, <laughs> Apparently, if you did have a digital copy, all those people at midnight tried to get going, and that's where that's some, when it hit. Yeah, there were some issues. There was actually a queue, almost like a. That's what I've heard. Like, yeah. that's where it was bad. Like they said, like for some people, it could be five minutes, or like it could be twenty five yeah. minutes for some people. <laughs> to get there was in. one person in our party, which isn't surprising, who was like they were the last one to get it, and this person is, you want to be the last of something, not in a malicious way, but. The hilarity in which he he goes about it. His, his name is like B Radford. <laughs> okay, I was wondering. I was He's like, this could be hilarious when uh, something like that happens to him. So I get to playing, man, and I got to tell you, initially, um, now they did when they were recruiting me. They were showing me the videos of things to look forward to, the story that was going to happen, mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, and if you had played the last expansion, this almost picked up directly from the end of that, as far as story went. Okay. Uh, one of the big things that I think changed completely from Destiny is the story itself. Okay. Um, as soon as you start the game, it, it approaches the storytelling for me in a completely different way. Or, uh, you mean they actually uh, attempted it this time? They attempted it, and it, and it's for the if if you paid attention in Destiny One to the content, to the lore, to the names that were dropped on different things on different mm-hmm. raids. You'd hear these names again, and you have context of where they came from. Yeah, but they also picked up on what a lot of games do now, and I, I like this is that if you're kind of a newbie, maybe you didn't play Destiny One, but you wanted to play Destiny Two, mm-hmm. it guided you in a way that would be more for like a noob. 
It, okay. le- it lets you know who these people are. Who, who, who is Cage Six and why is he important? Why is he important? Why Who's do I, I care core? about him? Yeah. And, and the way they, they develop that, I absolutely love. Another okay. thing that they incorporated that is, that I think adds so much more layer to the story, um, is the cutscenes. These are, these they are, in the first they game, had right? them, but I don't know how to explain why they're not like in Destiny 1. Destiny 1 felt, like maybe you had to you you had to go out and and be on like Bungie's website and look at lore. Um, it yeah, was that's it, it was a lot <laughs> harder to get context of what you were seeing. And the way these cutscenes are, they're they're beautiful and mm-hmm. and they they flow really seamlessly into the story. Okay. And there's this uh, there's cliffhangers that are left that lead you into your next missions, um, which I absolutely love. I was not expecting it. This. Story was one of the things that if you play Destiny One, you you were like they got to tighten this up in Destiny Two. Yeah, and they did. They delivered huge. That's what um, I've read. It's better. Uh, so I already talked about that. Um, also, the next thing that we quickly got, uh, I just pulled a John and knocked over a drink. Uh, <laughs> the next thing that we quickly saw was how the loot was going to happen, um, and the gear because. I, I don't know what I can spoil because with the beta, you, you got up to a point. I don't think you're going to spoil anything when it comes to gear. Well, well, just because there's always going to be more gear. <laughs> if, if you if you paid it, can I? If you paid attention to the story leading up, there's a new villain, and he's yeah with the he's what with the cabal. Yeah, the the dudes from Mars, right? Yeah, yeah, and he's he's what they call a BA, right? He's he's, he's got legit. well, yeah, he's got like the little Vader mask. He's the thing. Alabama of. Of taking over systems. Did you just call us evil? <laughs> well, he's the New York Yankee. Like, well, no doubt. Well, what I'm saying is, like, he, he's undefeated. Okay. Right? He, We're not undefeated, though. Technically, we are this year. I'm talking about last year. Uh, that still hurts. Yeah. But um, <laughs> if he if he comes after you, you're gone. You're, you're, you're done. So in the beta, you got to play kind of an intro story uh, and to a point to where he... You meet this character and, and your guardian kind of it looks like they meet their demise right now we all know you why would your guardian meet your demise you especially continue. seeing as you started out being resurrected yeah so <laughs> so from that point on your entire structure of how you were used to your gear and the things that that it did it changes right? okay so it, it kind of it finds the way to metroid mm-hmm. you as they would say they found a very unique way in um in reintroducing everything yeah uh, like your gunsmith your your character's you eventually make your way to a new kind of like if you were used to this the, the last city before. Yeah, it's what the farm this time. The right? first place you come to is the farm. Yeah. Uh, so it's structured structured very similarly to the lost city, but it's a little different. Um, and I and I like it because uh, so one of the first Ingrams I got was a, a was Ingram a, was a white Ingram, right? And that's part of the loot you get. You kill an enemy and this thing pops up and it's like a shiny, diamondy looking thing. It's called an Ingram. And they can be in the old game. They were those are like basic, aren't they? Yeah, they're white. whites, uh, greens, blues, purples, and then you got like a yellow, goldish one. That was you were like very excited. So being a white one comes out, and you're like, yeah. Well, then I eventually get to a point where a green one pops and a blue one pops, and then the Not main bad. thing that changes is that these no longer can be where they're just the Ingram, and you got to take them to the Crypt Arc. The only ones that are going to be that you take to the Crypt Arc now, Crypt Arc are the. Uh, the legendaries, the legendaries, the exotics, and then mm-hmm. they also introduce a new Ingram called a Bright Ingram. Yeah, there's a lot of controversy with those in there. I like them, um, and they they're more on the the in game part. Do you remember when you played before, and if you got to like the max level, you mm-hmm. started getting what they call mo- you you get modes of yeah, light. Yeah, of light. If you got your experience bar after max level, met its like peak, it would reset. And you'd get modes of light. They were used for like in game currency. Now you get a uh, one of those bright Ingrams, which are very cool, and they found a way to incorporate the um, the currency person at Everse. Mm-hmm. Um, that used to be the main place where you would have microtransactions. So now you have these things towards in game where you can take them over there, and, and she kind of decodes them, and you get see a lot of cosmetic things that are, are really cool for the game. From what I've read, the big complaints about that have been one. The bright Ingrams, you don't know what you're going to get. It's a random roll, and included in those are uh, 
modifications to your weapons that make them stronger. Yeah, that's and not, that's something I'm gonna touch on later too. Yeah, yeah, you can buy them, which yeah. is like a big thing. Yeah, you know, so basically, in theory, you could pay to win in this game to at you, least you, some extent. To some extent, you can. Um, and then also, what was it? The other big thing was like that's where you get your shaders and stuff, right? Yeah. And I guess everyone's ticked off because apparently with the shaders, they're like a consumable now or something. Like they're one time use, and if you put one on. And then you switch to another yeah. one because you want to see how it looks. Well, tough well to counter luck that if you complaint, want to go back to, to it. To counter that complaint, instead of getting, say, one shader, mm-hmm. now when you would get it, you get maybe three at a time. Yeah, but what if you wanted the first one you put on, but they, you wanted to see the other two? They, you, well, you can preview them. You don't have oh, to okay. put them on. They actually have a preview button. So, uh, But it's cool because now you can mix and match. It, 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 there's a, oh, that's good. That leads into an entire, an, an entire more like in-depth way to customize. Uh, like you, you mentioned the mods, those are brand new to Destiny. And those mods can make like an art rifle turn into a fire rifle. Yeah. Uh, you can add, uh, recovery. They're, they, they do exactly what they say. They mod your weapon to make it fit what you need. So if you get an exotic, um, and you want it to be something else, now you can mod it up and it'd be really cool. You can still break down weapons to infuse. So let's say you had an exotic gun that was great, but the drop on that weapon didn't give you, didn't yield the, the level you wanted it to. And in the old days, you could basically, if you had a primary weapon and a secondary, anything in your secondary you could use to infuse gotcha. into the secondary you wanted. All right, primary, secondary, and heavies are gone. Okay. Now they're called kinetic. Oh, know. the types of damage they do? Yeah. Um, so what's cool, though, is so if I got a kinetic scout rifle, I can use what would have normally been a secondary, because now a scout rifle can be in your secondary slot, mm. and use it to infuse. But you can only infuse the type of weapon. Gotcha. Okay. So I can't now infuse a scout rifle with something else. That in back in the day you could mix and match whatever you wanted. Now it's a lot more structured, which I kind of like. Hmm. Um, so yeah. So then I start gameplay, and the first thing I notice is that you got to really earn the things that you got really used to being in your face at Destiny. Hmm. Um, you start off, and and you, you you're basically starting off with the story of kind of like I said, where you play from the. Um, from the beta, from the intro stuff. Mm-hmm. And you immediately find your way making it to the farm, like you said. From there, some things... I don't want to spoil that because I do want you to, to enjoy it, but there's some things you're very accustomed to that are gone completely. Hmm. So you got to kind of work your way back from that. Okay. Uh, I did feel like... I'll go ahead and say this. The, uh, if you played Destiny 1, you started on Earth, or E-Earth as we call it, and then you went to In Moon. old Russia. You, then you went to the moon, and then you, you kind of went on from there. Uh, I think Venus was your next one, then Mars. Mars, yeah. I felt like it was very similar. We start on Earth, and then we go to a moon. It's not the moon. It's Titan, isn't it? It's Titan. Yeah. Uh, but I felt like we saw the kind of enemies we were used to seeing mm-hmm. almost in the same way we saw them before. But the way the story kind of wrapped itself around how and why these things were here mm-hmm. way better than before. All right. So, um, that was my only gripe. Cause I was like, oh, okay. But the story, it, it on purposely takes you to these places to open them up, which you can see now. All right. These are all these places I can go to strikes and nightfalls and things like that. If yeah. you remember before they came out, um, during your leveling process. Yeah. If I think like it was like level 12 when you started doing strikes. Yeah. Well, it's it's cool now because the interface is a little different, and I like it because you have things going on. They're called milestones now. Okay. Uh, they're not just they're not just blanketed as missions. They're called milestones, and and you can kind of keep track of what you're doing. You can say, okay, these are important things. These are my missions per se. But okay. as the maps unlock, there's there's different things. The patrols are back, and there's different events you can do, public events and things like that, which is really cool. It adds to the to the in depth of the once you kind of maybe get through the main story. Yeah. Um, now the max level is twenty, and I think it was so somewhere. That's the same as the original. It's the same, um, but what I, I really like is it. If you really play all day and all night, be sure you'll get to twenty. But they're they're doing things to slow you down. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you'll unlock the next mission, but say you if you go too fast, you got to level yourself up to be able to do that next mission. Now, what if you cool. only go too furious? Uh, then your name would be Vin Diesel and ah. you'd be awesome. And chicks would probably like you or something. I see what he did there. Yeah. Yep. Um, which some might say that was a dad joke. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit of a little. Uh, so, so then at that point you're, you're playing the game and 
you were like, well, now I want to go run the said strike. And yeah. if you remember before Destiny matchmaking, it kind of sucked. Yeah. <laughs> if it was not, it was non-existent to kind of like it was there, but then it was a headache. Flawless. Okay. Well, that's uh, good. If you're running solo and you don't really have a group and you got to a point before you'd have to go on forums or go in different places to find your group that you wanted to raid yeah, with. You or can run. do raid finder this time, right? Yeah. It's, it's really, it really worked well. Um, I, I, well, I they was, had, I, I remember they had matchmaking for, for the strikes. In Crucible, it, yeah, it just yeah. seemed, I guess my underlying theme for Destiny 2 was, all right, I played Destiny 1. I knew the ins and outs of it pretty much. Yeah. What I wanted was something better and more improved. Okay. And from the moment that I start, I knew that it, everything was better and improved. The things that were great, they didn't really mess with. They made them a little better. The things that needed work, yeah. they shine now, which was all you can really ask well, for. When Bungie's always been... Simple. Good at well, Bungie. I think innovation. I think they listened to the things that were bothering people. Yeah. Um. At, at one point, they changed your, your ghost voice because things were just were stagnant. And yeah. If you remember, I think, I think it was around the Taken King <laughs> expansion. You started seeing things moving in a in a good way for Destiny. Yeah, Taken King was I think when it Destiny kind of became a good game. Yeah. For in most people, as as far as they say, because like I remember after like they gave you the free character to go up to level twenty. I tried to go back to do the original uh, vanilla story to make my third character. And I was like, nope. <laughs> and, like, it just became clear right away. I was like, okay, no, no. This is where Destiny starts now. Yeah. Uh, and if you remember, Destiny was always fun, too, when you look for, like, your, your treasure. Yes. Your little treasure chest. Those are still there. Um, what's really cool is as you unlock your map, you know, John, we play games and we like finding treasures, right? That's no secret. Now there's these symbols that showed up on our map. We we're like, what are these? Ooh. One of them looks kind of like a crosshair, like a, a cross with a dot in it. And that signifies like a, a gold type chest that you want to find. It's going to be hitting a little bit harder. And another one, it has, it's like upside, up, an, an upside down U. There's two of them, one bigger than the other with a dot in it. And those signify, John, a new feature. What's it called? They're lost sectors. And they're designed to be, yeah. <laughs> they're designed to be, as they're introduced to you, uh, they're designed to show you, all right, at some point, the old guardians came here and that's the mark for these places to let you know that something's a little, little, little rough back there. You know, there's going to be a guy that's going to be a little hard to beat. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a, he did it. How's it going? Finally. <laughs> so the lost sectors are, are awesome. They, they're the things to me that, once I, it took me like two days to realize what they were. I was like, "Where are you thinking on this map? Lost sectors." <laughs> um, I hope you said it that way. And they're on, and but see, here's the thing: they're on every planet. So if if you're a low level and you you get to one of the later planets and you're like, "I know what lost sectors are. I'm going to go in here and try to," you will get work because you're gonna die. you got you got to be at certain light levels to really get to the lo the lost sectors. That everything co coincides with with all that. So it's end game content. No, because they're even on Earth as level. They show you when you meet, okay, when you meet good. Devrim. I think that's his name. I just call him Dev. He's uh, you saw him, I think, or heard of him in the stuff leading up. He's a new character Maybe that was him. on Earth. Um, uh, think of a video game that's showing you the, the mechanics of the new game. When you get sent to Earth, you are sent to go see this guy, and he mm -hmm. tells you, "Hey, this is what we got going on here. Here are the things to look out for. Here's how this game's going to navigate." And he sends you kind of like on your mission, which then it eventually leads you, like I said, to the moon and to everywhere else. But you always come back to this guy. He's got a British accent. What is the thing about British accents? They like make everything funner. They think when you have a British accent, you are smarter yeah. and funnier. It, Neither is true. But it works for me. It, John Cleese the, the, <laughs> disagrees. The The voice acting in this game is top notch, uh, which is tap notch. It's tap notch. Um, I can't say enough about, I, I, yeah, the cutscenes were there, Chris. Mm -hmm. Everything just looks crisper and better. You mean it doesn't better. look like they had to make a game that could run on the previous generation? Okay. Yes. It, <laughs> and I, yes. I think that's that's a good statement. Yeah. Um, one big thing that we were excited about in our circle uh, was that they're, they're really dedicating a, a system that if you're in a clan. Before, mm. we, we actually registered as a clan on Bungie.net, and it didn't matter. You were just in a clan. But now there's things. You actually get a banner. Okay, so they're from kind of pulling from like wow, right? ish, yeah. yeah. And then as we progress, our our all the things we do for our clan are is is 
uh, tracked. And if we get to certain levels, we're going to unlock bonuses that because we're in a clan, yeah, yeah. we get. One of them will be, well, hey, good. you get more XP when you're raiding or looting together. Or doing so when can together. you start making it so that when people create their new characters, they automatically get an invite to join your, your clan? <laughs> oh, no, that's funny. Because that <laughs> happens on games like WoW and Final yeah. Fantasy. Um, so that's really cool. Um, and I think, I think I've really hit everything I wanted to talk about. I can't say enough about how much more refined and just better it is. There are, there are parts when you're going through the level, it looks like almost like the distance is a, is artwork. It's so pretty. Hmm. And you're just, you're just kind of going through it. It's, it's really, really good. I, if you play Destiny 1, if you took a break, I would highly recommend picking up Destiny 2. I, I found myself. Stop looking at me. Okay, it's not happening. Chris. I found myself enjoying really every moment. They got little really, when you first pop the game in, mm-hmm. it shows you all the big things you accomplished and with who. That's cool. There's like this little sketch thing that's, that's going on in this. So your saves, everything you've done in the first game transfers over. Um, no. No. <laughs> no? No. So when no, you start that's... the game, you have to select a character. All in, in, in both Destinies 1 and 2, you have three characters that you can, three character slots. Mm. All of your characters, <clears throat> the shell of them comes to Destiny 2. So all of the way my Hunter looked, the way my Warlock looked, the way my Titan looked, they were all there. But it's nothing but cosmetic. There's no... Only cosmetic because they, they blanket you in the games, um, the gear they want you in for the intro. Mm-hmm. And the way that takes place, and they they're going to strip you down from everything anyway. Uh, we all chose to basically delete everything except for our our first character we ever made, because that was our first character. I mean, people are going to do what they want to. Some people are going to keep all three of their characters. Some are going to delete them because it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, that was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing nothing came over from Destiny. The thing I'm talking about is the first time you play the game, like the nightfalls and the. Uh, the Crota battle, the Crota raid, it showed you when you completed it. It's just kind of like a memory. Like, hey, remember when you played Destiny 1? Here's what you did. Now go on, on your adventure. But it's it's saying here's what the player did, not the character did. Yeah, me as like my screen name okay. and then my friend's screen names. Okay. And we did this on this date. They want you to know just how much Bungie can track you. Dude, <laughs> it was like 2014 They're we good were playing that. Destiny 1. Yeah, that was when it came out. Yeah. 2014. It's, just, it's, it's, it's crazy to think that basically three years ago. Yeah. And that was a quick three years. Well, here's it where was. I'm here's where I'm checking out Metacritic. Okay. And this leads up to a question. Okay. It's currently resting at a 83. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to be the more the more reviews co- that come in, the lower the score goes. Okay. But my question is. And you've been playing this game since since launch since, since launch Tuesday night basically yeah. I feel like people have had uh, critics have had plenty of time with this game, mm-hmm. but that could be my own ignorance, and I fully acknowledge that. Do you think they're stalling on this game? Like, there's not they're true. What are they waiting for? Because as of right now, there's only fourteen reviews out on metacritic what do you think is going on uh, why is it take everyone, it's taking an, an, an unusual <laughs> amount of time well they they could be consumed in the game there's there's like if i glossed over this i apologize there's a lot to do mm-hmm. i think there should be enough to where if you played about a week you should be able to do a nice review on it and highlight the things that you know they've, they've enhanced or made better if you go google anything right now and you talk about the things destiny 2 has done or improved or made worse you can I, find anything you want well to. i can understand the game not being reviewed at launch because you got to turn on the servers things like that mm-hmm. you got to test certain things but it just seems it just seems like people are maximizing or deliberately maximizing their own credibility by being it's like instead of being first to the race you win by being the last to the race well yeah. I would to say make, to make your to make your critique the last word almost. I guess. Yeah. Well, I it would just say, seems strange that after all this time, I thought I would see these things getting dumped out on, over the weekend, but here we are Tuesday, no. and we're still waiting for. There's this. probably some folks now that would prefer. <clears throat> I mean, if the rate is dropping tomorrow, there probably be some that will be like, "Well, I'm going to wait till that rate comes out." There are some that probably wouldn't put this out until they beat the nightfall, which takes a good bit of time yeah like you know to get to that level <laughs> very, to be able to do this kind of stuff very very hard um you nightfall. know you also just get people 
like, look, there are those who they went and did the preview event and they're smaller entity sites and being first really matters to them. Um, so I guess Does it matter you, to Destructoid? Destructoid, I think when I read that guy's review, I looked at the bomb and he said he had done all that stuff. He said, I beat the story. I am currently seeing it like light level 275 and I beat the nightfall. So he had done everything that was pretty much out that really, really matters. So I don't blame him for putting out his thing. You know, if he didn't want to wait for the raid or whatever and didn't know exactly when the raid was releasing. But if a bunch of people were getting ready to review this and then they're told, you know, yesterday, hey, by the way, Wednesday we're releasing the raid. Then that makes to sense them, to me. It, yeah, I mean, like, why a- not wait? Because that is end game content. That's the first major end game patch that's going to carry people through until they release whatever one point, whatever update it will be, you know, here probably in like November or October. Yeah. So these kinds of games, you, it's people there, they appreciate it more people taking their time and doing the due diligence behind it than rushing through because it's Which just is crazy. You it, know? Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, these games, well, they're the not the same. It, they are within five months. They're not the same game. They are on launch day. Well, the thing I, I just wish we can move on from this, but yeah. Um, my other question is there seems to be a trend as I'm reading stuff mm-hmm. that people are calling it, Almost like it's not a sequel, but just another expansion. What do you say to that? That's why I've gathered looking. I at can. It, it I just can. seems like that's kind of the sum of every what everybody's saying. And that when all when push comes to shove, I see this thing resting in the mid in the mid seventies, as think opposed to. No. I mean, it's at eighty three. Well, here's the thing: and it just yeah. keeps going I, down. That that throws me off a little bit because if you play Uncharted and you play Uncharted two, in 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 essence, it's the same kind of game. Sure. Right. I mean, you got a guy who's exploring. There's a lost treasure, and you're going to fall off a cliff. Yeah, but that thing you're not expecting to. That thing went like from here to there. I, but what the I'm saying is, is a very generalized idea. It's Destiny's going to get better. It's not going to cut ties from everything it was completely, mm-hmm. right. because towards the end, it was it was actually a very good game. Yeah, uh, I think what it's done is it's done. It's introduced a new character, a new whole a whole new area of like people that existed that you didn't know. Uh, it introduced a really bad, like bad guy. Uh, who I mean, a lot of people are calling the Darth Vader of Cabal's. It's really cool. <laughs> to be fair, like though that kind of stuff, you could argue, you know, like for something like Wow, that would be an expansion. What you just described, a different new hey, area. Now, I was going to get to that. Yeah, I can understand how like, and, and sometimes expansions are these big, huge things. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't. I feel it's somewhere in between. It's it's a it's a second game, but it also could be. Just the next big expansion, but nothing. See, and the reason I separate that is because nothing carried over from the first one. Yeah, a complete reset on everything. I think if this was like a PC game, there would have never been in Destiny Two. But the consoles, in a way, they kind of they demand it. Yeah, yeah, they demand it. And if you're Activision, you're like, think of how much money we are leaving on the table. By not putting a You're two right? on there, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like my I, thought, I, thought <laughs> really just, I thought you were just doing a voice. Um, I, didn't, but I didn't look at you. It, you know, to me, yeah, I think like looking at it from someone <clears throat> who's played Destiny and from the outside looking in, should I come back? It definitely feels like one point five. Like looking, at it still looks like Destiny. It looks like it's been improved uh, and it's been expanded upon, maybe somewhat. It's been there, but I think if you didn't love destiny originally and you went and played the taking king and you didn't really love it then i don't see from just first glance that there's going to be something here that all of a sudden makes you go oh wow this completely changes the game it just looks like hey we took all these things that were good ideas that weren't really refined to the best they could be maybe in part because we just need innovation other parts because of limitations from the uh, the previous consoles, and we've expanded them out to make something that is much more realized than the first game. And if that's the case, if you're a Destiny fan, I think that's all you really wanted. Like, really, uh, you know, someone like you know Sean plays a good bit, but he's got two friends that I know of that they didn't, you know, the critical or whatever. The fact that this isn't a full, completely reinvention of the game versus just maybe an expansion a big expansion doesn't matter to them because they will gladly, they enjoy that game so much that they will gladly buy this and they will buy the DLC when it comes out and they will play it for hours upon hours on end, making sure they do everything they can do in that game. And as long as it's delivering that to them, 
That's really all that matters. Is this yeah. a season pass game? Uh, I don't yeah, think they yeah, No, they did. Yeah, because okay. they tried to sell it to me at GameStop. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's definitely going to have its its guaranteed stuff that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think what Chris said is is kind of accurate. If you didn't like Destiny like vanilla, yeah, um, and you you never came back to Taken King. I did Taken King. I think you I maybe like missed out that it did get better. Mm-hmm. Y'all give me an example though of a, of a game that is a sequel that kind of reinvented the way it did itself. So I kind of get an understanding because um, Assassin's Creed Two, Mass Effect from one two. to two, mm-hmm. Mass that's Effect Two. Mass yeah, Mass Effect 2. Well, Mass Effect yeah. went from this like open, well, not really open, but like kind hardcore of RPG like hardcore to, a, to, to a, action RPG yeah. and really expanded, like completely brought in new characters and everything. And it was like, whoa, you know, it was completely different from the tone of the first game. Super Mario Brothers 2. <laughs> <laughs> I will, not in a good way. <laughs> the, the way. The way Destiny 2 comes on, it's a, it's a complete reset type everything. It's very... I, there's no way I'm please don't take this as me saying it's as impactful of Assassin's Creed two was, but it, it does this thing to where you realize this is a, a different game inside and out almost. Yeah. Sure. There's a lot of things you're familiar with, but they restructure things. Uh, and you go through this journey. That's it's really, it's, it's been rewarding so far. And I'm a weekend. I put a lot of hours in a lot already. I'll be interested to see like, the, where you are in three months. Yeah. And, and and if you follow the path from Destiny 1, I played it till I couldn't really play it anymore. Yeah. Until I felt kind of burned out. And then maybe I'd get the next expansion uh, or when the next thing came out. Whereas, like Chris said, I got a couple of friends who they're going to keep playing. Like literally, They're going to have everything. They would play with you in our games, but the moment something dropped out, uh, like whether it was just a patch or... Where you know there was a new level cap or whatever, or it was an actual expansion of some sort, they disappeared. That's what they were going to do until they did the content all the way through. Um, personally, I, I just it. don't have time for that kind of stuff. And honestly, this kind of game, the more I've played Destiny, the more I realize that it's really a Diablo game that is kind of trying to disguise itself as a uh, an MMO light. And personally, I just Meaning it's all about the loot? Is it that- really is. It's about yeah, game guns. You know? Cause, and, and Chris said the previous game had a light level. So you got to level 20, yeah. and then you needed to get your light level to a specific spot. That any From where you had your light level, it would affect on what you could do for in-game content. Which is, I mean, to be fair, that is an MMOs, mm-hmm. but it's also yeah. the defining characteristic of, uh, of something like Diablo as far as in-game. And whereas an MMO has just a ton of stuff for you to go out there and do from fighting to, you know, <laughs> getting pets and all that. Uh, you know, destiny was mainly focused on, on that, on getting the better gear and, and mounts and things like that. You're constantly yeah. wanting to see, Oh, what was this Ingram or, yeah. Um, I got to get a new one of these cause everything else is at this. We're going to go run so, this raid so we can get this drop. Yeah. Now, now in this game, it's not called light anymore. It's called power level. Okay. I, I don't know more. I, Can you get I, unlimited power? No, I'm looking at it as, as the same exact way I looked at light level. You'll never. I be know that for... you got to get to a certain point to do certain things. Yeah. Okay. So, so. It, as of right now, the game has gotten better to me. If you played Destiny in every way that it could from Destiny One, uh, it's delivered on. There's the, no step backwards at all. Anything? Not anything. You the only thing that I noticed in a negative way, which really wasn't negative, that I touched on was. The progression of planets felt very similar to the progression of Destiny. You were 1. determined to knock that bottle over. I know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I being, know. I'm, very, I'm being very handy today. I got a lot of hand movements. That's what uh, she said. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. But yeah, um, I'll keep I'll keep everyone updated. Uh, you know, it's, it's, and I'm sure Chris will let you know if I stop playing and oh, I'll be the first. Started playing something else. So I expect. Thank you for listening. Hey, thank you guys. You. I hope. Uh, I did it justice. We'll never talk about this game ever again. <laughs> Please write in to uh, weeklygamechat at gmail.com. Let me, let me uh, real quick, um, Electronic Gaming Monthly, the idea of being able to customize on an individual level is a good one. But then attaching the consumable variable to it just feels like a step yeah. backward. This I'll is what this, I was talking I'll about. I'll tell you this. I have not bought one mod or one shader. I guess You can go buy those things, but I have not. But I guess it's like... And I've gotten the same, one of the same shaders that somebody went and bought. Mm-hmm. I got it just in a drop. Gotcha. The entire 
any all of that has been revamped to where you don't feel like you're getting gypped off. Mm-hmm. There used to be times in the other game where the the loot system you, you'd get something and oh my god that sucks or it wasn't where people thought it should be as far as I guess the randomness of things. Yeah, but like you could re- roll on that yeah. because you earn stuff. You know, yeah, you, you could know, through the game. That's kind of like you, the big but what thing. I'm telling you is I haven't touched the everse. I haven't yeah. touched any microtransactions. Yeah, but how are you going to feel like when you get out there and someone's put all this money and has better gear than you? Know, it because- won't be better as far as statistics. Sure. Now, if they went out and bought a mod that I just didn't happen to, I haven't seen so far that the mods you have to go buy. They are readily available to to trade in, to earn, mm-hmm. to get in chests, to loot, okay. all of that kind of stuff. Okay. If it comes to a point where they eventually go like Battlefield did, where yeah. I'm sitting there and I'm grinding on my medic class and they release a release a patch or an update the day, now you can just go buy the medic class for twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Then I'll then I'll probably guess, stop playing. I would say like personally it's just someone who likes customization of characters and stuff like that. It would irk me to know that you've made it where I can pick between which pieces of shaders I can use on whatever gear I want. And the thing, though, is, as he's saying, and, like, the big complaint here, it's, like, you get it one time, and that's it. And, like, Wait. now you're, like, what if I had something where five five months down the line, I unlocked this one shader, and it would go great with something Here's I originally deal. had, and now I don't on paper, have it. On paper, it seems like a problem, but I cannot reiterate enough. You get a ton of shaders. Can I ask a question? And you get sounding a lot stupid. And you or get, shaders? What's a shader? Shaders I think are a shaders kind of like graphics. <clears throat> they, they're like um, they're like basically designs for your armor. And they, they make them the look color. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So it is a shader. Yeah. Yeah. It literally. It literally. Is in the old game, okay. if you, when I when you would run a raid and you got like Crota, he was a boss. You'd get the shader from that raid. It was very themed based on that. Fight. Yeah. All the weapons that you got from there. They were themed. They looked like little alien. They were. I've noticed. I mean, I'm telling you, very. That could be an issue to some. And I don't know how much that EG. I EGM, can tell you why they did it. EGM guy. Yeah. I don't know how much they got. In my little week, I've got rows and rows and rows and rows of shaders. I can tell you why they did it. It's it's Activision because they are going. You know, it's not you guys who are going out there and you're getting things. I'm sure there'll probably be. You'll start to see repeats or whatever. But it's people who just, Pete? there's going to be a bunch of people. <laughs> the reason they did it That's a dad is joke. that they're <laughs> Pete and repeat. Yeah, right. <laughs> that has a dad joke. Uh, <laughs> they're going to be people that go out there and they just drop a hundred dollars to get these bright Ingrams and they're going to use them, you know, because hey, they Chris. just, they just want to be able to get whatever they want and it's money. It's, what if, it's about what if that. I told you, you know, two people who spent a hundred dollars already. See, I mean, that's how these people make their money. <laughs> who? You, uh, that would be rude. To Thou shall not name names. <laughs> okay. name, name. That's funny. But yes, that's that's the big reason I think they. I will they say Mike D said he's going to go do it tonight. Though. I don't care about dropping his name. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Get a new credit card. Just, <laughs> and he won't. And he won't hear this. That's funny. Uh, he will we download. Can say it. whatever. Yeah, he'll download he will it. download it for the show. For well, the show. For the show. Let's uh. Let's do old pivot and let's do pivot table time. Yeah, let's let's do some news and keep talking about destiny. <laughs> right, that's funny. Hot off the press and straight to your ears. Weekly games chat presents the news. <laughs> news. <laughs> news. <laughs> oh, if you only heard the lead into that, we always say that. Ah, yep, they'll never know. That's part of our stick. That's that's just for us. That's just our thing. Something. Destiny 2 passes 1.2 million concurrent players. Bungie has revealed that Destiny 2 has more than 1.2 million concurrent users as of September 10th. Per tweet, thank you all so much for playing, Guardians. Right now, Destiny 2 has over 1.2 million concurrent players online. We'll see you in the wild. Overall, sales numbers have not been revealed, but we can guarantee it's more than 1.2. Yeah, I would think if it, they're like getting 1.2 concurrent, that probably means like they've, I would say somewhere between 5 and 10 million already. Yeah, in, in case that nobody, I mean, that's just, that just I, I, means at any given time. I was going to say, yes. for the layman, fellas. 1.2 is a lot. That is a lot. Like uh, That's time. about what Dota averages on yeah. any given time. 1.2. Dude, hey, was that, um, was that a fun fact? Fun fact. Oh! Speaking of Destiny again. What? Yeah, right. This is what we're supposed to do, guys. Xbox Store confirms Destiny DLC leak. Ooh. An Xbox Store listing has all but confirmed a previous leak regarding Destiny 2's Curse of 
Osiris DLC without a release date given. It include the following details. Explore Mercury and its mysterious infinite forest. New story missions and adventures. New theme weapons, armor, and gear to earn. New cooperative activities. New competitive multiplayer areas. Destiny 2 Expansion 1 Curse of the Osiris continues your Guardian's journey with all new story missions and adventures set in a new destination, Mercury. Journey through time and space to learn the secrets of Osiris. Avert a dark future and... (laughs) Avert a dark future and rebuild the ties between the legendary warlock and his greatest student, Ikora Ray. That's it. Ikora. Ikora. Okay. Yeah, that was yeah. close. Mm. Yeah. Thanos, Thanos. That'll be fun. What? You can I that? can I ask him one more Destiny question? Yeah, I think it's fair. You get one. Yeah. Everybody is Destiny gets one. is Destiny two living up to the promise that Destiny that Bungie originally made? I think over time, yeah, it's slowly. Get- I it came out. It came out the gates. Look, right now, if I told you that Anthem mm-hmm. looks like it's going to be this great game, this great adventure, you would eat Anthem great. looks a lot closer. At least, I mean, to be fair, we've okay. only seen one demo uh, of the game. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, it, uh, this is huge. You see a bunch sh- of jetpacks. Yeah, like the thing right now, I would say packs, is this. I can't say yet, boosters. but it looks a lot more than what was initially teased than what Destiny is. Remember, Destiny they didn't show footage of the game till like. First time was about four months before the game came out. At E3. Yes. And like and they showed the guys walking through on their headsets and they yeah. were saying what well, I couldn't wait to play that game. Mm. I feel like they're definitely at that point. So I'm, uh, I'm a little maybe I'm a little jaded. Maybe I got my destiny I guess, glasses on. Like I said, they originally seem to be teasing up this idea of a, an MMO in a way, but like a shooter. And <laughs> It didn't end up being that. Like, it, like if you Why remember, was that so funny. Do you remember? I don't know. Do you remember his body language? Yeah, I think it was. But do like you a, remember a uh, the initial like teaser videos where they're like teasing, like, "Hey, you get on your phone and you'd be like, oh, man, we're going to Venus tonight.'" It made like it gave off this sense of like kind of like how in a way No Man's Sky is like you hop in your ship and you just fly out and you oh, go to your planet that you're going to. That's another cool. There's thing no, they did. there's no like Dang. open world explore exploration as much as like say something as wow or shoot anything like breath of the wild or you know whatever uh last little destiny, wow or, last, last little destiny thing mm-hmm. you used to have to like go all the way to space to get to your ship yeah i heard they else. i heard they did now you can just go from anywhere from the planet you're good on, like I mean, really quick yeah amazing. that's so, good super good so it's they did come now you can do that i can just go explore now i don't have to go through the four minute <laughs> loading period it's right. just a two minute right <laughs> <laughs> We're cutting it down. Bethesda has a new game. Bethesda will release a brand new game before 2017 wraps up. According to Bethesda VP of Marketing, Pete Hines, quote, we have a ton of stuff going on. And we even have a game coming out this year we haven't even told anyone about. They can't wait. Won't be long. What remains unknown is if this will be a AAA or something uh, less. I'm going to go something less. Do you know what this is? Uh, probably a mobile game. This is not the game. Of I Thrones, think mobile game, game is too easy, but I complete. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Or I guess maybe a card game or, or something. It's got to be. What something. are you thinking, Sean? Game of Thrones, Bethesda. No. That's really ambitious, don't you think? They've already they've already confirmed that's not real. Oh, it's not real. But they, yeah, that that got. No, it, I was going to say, rebuked. Chris, it got rebuked. Yeah, but what if it didn't? <laughs> if if it didn't. <laughs> Plus, if so it was, uh, what, if, a what if they were like, no, if it was real, there's no phone or cherry I mean, coke here, <laughs> you know, they're like, if it was, uh, yeah. if it was real too, of course, you know, if it was a triple A game, they would, they have to hype, they it have up. to hype, but yeah, you're not going to release. I'm going to counter you with months. something. Mm. There's one time. Yeah. A superstar in music. Maybe not to your ears. Maybe not to anyone at this table, but she was a superstar and is one in uh-huh. music. Beyonce Knowles. She can do that. You can do that. She music. just dropped a CD. I'll tell out you of why. nowhere. I, yeah. And it sold millions and millions. I think that Bethesda's like, let's drop it. Look, Beyonce wrote about Becky with a good hair. <laughs> and and the, Lemonade. The plus with music what? is, yeah, the, the <laughs> Fallout New Vegas 2. Ooh. They didn't do New Vegas 1. That was I know Obsidian. That. Yeah, but, yeah. But they was published. Yeah. I wouldn't, I would love that. I wouldn't be surprised. Obsidian trying, did that? Yeah, Obsidian did that. I'm going Game of Thrones even though they were... Because they were working on... Uh, <laughs> All my money's on that. They got done with their DLC with Fallout 3, and then they went straight into Skyrim while they worked on that. Obsidian did that. Uh, 
I'll go with. I, can't, I just can't imagine what it is. I'll go with a Fallout card game because they already have a they have a Skyrim card game. Why not? Am I crazy to think that the card game phenomenon is kind of going down? No. Tell tell I that mean, to Valve. <laughs> well, I know, but I think well, I think it's at its height. At least I think it's we're going to start seeing the back end of it. I I've like heard it. that forever. I think, I, 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 have I've, you? I've really yeah. enjoyed um, Magic comes out like every year. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, the, the established ones, yeah, but I yeah. mean, you have to remember. Can like, there be another Hearthstone? It, it's never going to be like Hearthstone. It's never going to. Card games are never going to have that release hype of like say something like Destiny Two, but it's like you, you sit there and don't think about that. There are tons of people on bro on pc every day who just download these things and that's all they and do there is are play tons them. of people on twitch who watch yeah. people play card games right i mean it's true like yeah hearthstone's like the fifth or sixth most watched game on twitch it's ridiculous it's ridiculous well, i guess i just answered my own question right i might need to do that now well just go watch twitch no um, now speaking Twi- of steam <laughs> yeah Malaysia has blocked the Steam store. Yes, while, I love this story. While Malaysia's full ban on the Steam store, uh, Steam has been lifted. Several internet service providers in Malaysia are still blocking access to the store. The story began when it learned that Malaysia did this because of the title "Fight of the Gods." Uh, the game puts religious figures in the ring together to duke it out. I want to play this game. I know. It became blocked at the introduction of a new fire known as Jesus. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, many internet service services in malaysia are still banning the purchase of the game i believe they are very uh hardcore controlling uh muslim nation are they not are know? we um like i guess like, of course yeah well, they see, have their own divisions in well, that, the, well jesus christ actually threw me off that i'm like is malaysia a christian nation but it's like no muslims re- revere christ as a prophet but yeah it just i don't want did y'all feel that what that knowledge that just got dropped by John <laughs> so casually? I want to say, yeah. Thanks. I don't think Good it's job. like I don't think it's like ISIS, but it's like whoa. It's kind of whoa. like uh, where was the group of the people? I want to. I want. I want to. I want to just move on to the next. Yeah. Thing. Right. <laughs> no, it's. I just. Um, can you imagine Jesus Christ as a fighting character? He can instantly heal himself. Of course. At any can. time, so exactly. he's got to be invincible. And you know, <laughs> my God's better than yours. That well, kind of thing. Does that mean if uh, <laughs> here's the thing? It's if Hindu's in there, uh, no Buddha the, or well, not Buddha. It's the Buddha. Hindu. He's like, why am I here? I'm not fighting. Well, isn't it Hindu that believe in reincarnation? Yeah. So he. So can I'm just, saying, yeah, he can just keep that elephant and keep coming back. Every it's crazy time. to think that a game like this exists. Exists. Or, I want to play it. Or has it already come out? Yeah, but. I hope it's like an action movie game. It, it shows they, you how serious some people take religion and religious things. Yeah, they're like yeah. you can play the game about robbery and rape or, or robbery and <laughs> I'm gonna say robbery again, and we're cool <laughs> with it. Yeah, you know. But no, when it comes to this religion I'm sure, thing, I'll say this: I would I wouldn't be surprised if Malaysia's censoring that kind of game. But I'm, I'm wondering if that means that they is the prophet in here. I'm sure he is. That's who's the prophet? Muhammad. Sorry, he's the probably just Muhammad. a bright light. <laughs> Shine bright. I can't see his image. <laughs> Shine bright like a diamond. Uh, Nintendo crazy. working on achievement trophy system. Yes. Thanks the Nintendo God. Switch yes, may yes. soon be joining the Xbox and Sony uh, with their inclusion of a trophy achievement system. An indie developer is quoted as saying, quote, Nintendo doesn't have an official support for achievements and leaderboards like Sony or Microsoft, but we know they're working on it. The news was learned when the developer was answering questions on whether it supported online rankings. Oh, that's in, good. In response to the realization that they accidentally leaked this, mm-hmm. the developer said, and I quote, oops. <laughs> I think like... Uh, oops, basically confirming the most this is logical probably happening. The most logical thing to me is it should be coins, and every time you hit a level, you should get a life. You know, and it should be like how Mario is. So every time you get 100 coins. I think it, be, I think it should be coins, but I think it should be all the power-ups from Mario. Oh. So you first you, you get to like mushroom level, then like... You starred this game or whatever you want to call it. That makes sense for, for, for definitely for uh, a platinum. Fur, fur, fur. I got fur. me, I got a Tanuki suit. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> but no, this is, if this happens, I hope that they immediately apply these trophies 
to everything that you've done and achieved in games previously. This like man started playing Zelda again. And all of a sudden, he wants it to be retroactive. Yep. See why I hate John? I hate him too. Every week. I I don't know. I'll say this: that could go. <laughs> what just happened? It could go one of either. <laughs> He's getting one of again. two ways with that because. Hold up, it'll probably be up to the developer I if they want to do nice it. Nice things. That's why I, I would think it would be up to the developer. Of course, obviously, I would I would not be surprised if Nintendo all their stuff adds it back in, but it might be different for some other people. What about like, Nintendo Power? We're, we're moving on. <laughs> now you're fighting with power. <laughs> Playing with power. Oh, whatever. I don't care. Um, FIFA is a bad magazine. Uh, games likely on the Switch. Hold yeah, up. I said it. Hold Sh- up. Sean, hold. On. I know. I gotta trust me. What's next? Did you gonna, I, you did I start, trigger you? Are you now going to? Are you now going to say Game Pro was a bad magazine? Yeah, it was. God, that was a good magazine. I enjoyed uh, the parody I, ones. Every I love the rating system. Yeah, it was like five exploding guys. And everyone got five exploding guys. <laughs> no, they didn't. Yeah, they did. No. They got four or five. Everything. No, they they didn't. were like the original Game Informer. They're like, you know what? Informer. Your mom is the original Game Informer. It's like you know what? If you got two out of five from them, you. You earned it. I love Game Informer. Your mom's so fat. They're all right. She sat on a rainbow and made Skittles. They gave Metroid now that is Samus Returns a 9.8. That's all you care about. Your and mom, they, they gave Other M a 5.4. Your mom's so dumb, she thought a quarterback was a refund. <sighs> That's funny. And she only spent a dollar. Anyways, more FIFA games likely coming to Switch. Supervising producer Andre. Lazarusku. I don't know how you say that name. It's, I love yeah. doing this to you. I should just say Andre European. <laughs> I think it's on Andre, 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 Andre European. Lazarusku. Uh, yeah, let's go with it. Uh, has given promise to the idea of future FIFA on Switch, according to an interview on GameSpot. Quote, I think we are going to see more FIFA on Switch in the future. He did not rule out the idea of future Switch versions of FIFA to run on Frostbite, but said Frostbite is a very different beast. Despite these limitations, he believes that this is currently, quote, the best portable FIFA we've ever done. Way to go out on a limb, guy. It sounds like to me, well, we've already made it working. So, you know, if we can just update the rosters at least every year and sell it, we will. <laughs> well, in theory, a lot, of, a lot of these games, for me, at least in my experience, there are very little things that are tweaked. You're going you're to counter yeah, Madden this yeah, year. There, no, I mean, well, I mean, like in NBA 2K. FIFA, FIFA. I'm only talking about FIFA. FIFA does their iterations. How, how many how many times you play FIFA, dog? Good bit. I think you just lied. No, we recorded it. No, I've never seen you play FIFA. Have you ever you, been over and here? You stated earlier that we've been playing games together for about ten years. We have, but you also apparently don't remember when I had EA access and they consistently put FIFA games on there. You did just counter me with the possibility that I missed you playing FIFA on Xbox, but yep. trust me, with haste when I get home. I was going to play with Matt Orr. Your achievements will be looked at on Xbox there One. There will not be many. <laughs> <laughs> I would always create a player and, and go, and then I would always have to put it on a very low difficulty to be even and, decent. And in that the game. name you just said, he had an Xbox One like on day one. He also wanted like- to play with me on PlayStation. 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 He'd play with you if you'd buy the game. I know he would. I know. That's what she said. More Ness. <laughs> More Ness and SNES. Die. I Mini wish style. you would die. I'm so, you know what? I, I've ignored it. I've ignored it. You've held it in. But and that's not is, good for you. This is, this is not about Chris believing it's the SNES. He doesn't believe it's the SNES. He I do does it because he, it bothers me. 67% of people who say Super NES say mm. Super NES. <laughs> What? Wait, I think you meant what to go kind of like. What stat was that? You, wait, okay. did you just sixty-seven percent of the people who refer to the console call it Super NES? But the way you said it was Super more NES. of like you were kind of doing more. I know uh, what I said, and I know how asinine it was. No, you're doing like a freaking anchor man, where he's like sixty-seven percent of the time it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what you were trying to do. Uh, Nintendo has announced that we'll see more stock of the upcoming SNES Classic Edition in a return to stores for the seemingly discontinued predecessor, the NES Classic Edition, according to Nintendo, due to an incredible demand for the upcoming SNES Classic. For the record, folks, 
he writes it out in the abbreviations. If he wants me to say Super Nintendo, if he writes it out, I'll say it. I don't believe that. I, I, I'm going to ask you to do that next time, and I don't think he'll do it. Well, that's not even it. the point. Even I, I write it out. <laughs> I see it, too, and I go Super NES. Uh, yep. Nintendo plans to ship the retro-inspired product in 2018. Originally, shipments were announced to cease at the end of the calendar year. In addition, it was added that the NES Classic Edition... We'll make a return to stores in the summer of 2018. You forgot to read the sentence. Chris is a. I love you. Just kidding. You just made me have to do an edit. I hope really? Why is, Why is that an edit? The ASS. <laughs> I almost got him to say it again. He can call me a dick, but I can't call him an A. Richard. He meant it in the sense of a Richard, folks. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see now. I didn't even note the time. Thanks a lot, John. Hey, flush with Frank. It'll be okay. Oh, no. I'm going to make Chris actually edit the show. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> He's going to be really upset when he comes in. First off, folks, the episode, apparently you didn't hear this till Thursday, and you didn't hear John once this episode. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. Every time John talks, beep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just put vote. I'm John. <laughs> This is what I'm, I'm saying. saying. Things now that you can't hear. I'm I'm rah, 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 rah. <laughs> that's what it would be. At um, least put in the. That's what she said. Comments. Leave those in. <laughs> I say what she said. Jokes. Speaking of which, we um, need to get a shirt. Anyways, at some point with our our things on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like someone though. Uh, a Nintendo finally has a uh, finally realized. It's like hey. If we make more of these, people might buy them, and we could make profit, which is a good thing. So good for them. I'm yep. proud of them. They just gave me a thumbs up. I like thumbs up. Capitalism. <laughs> well, they'd already previously stated that they were um, expanding production for the Super NES Classic. They also said, though. Yeah, uh, but they weren't. Were they really supposed to go into 2018? I thought those were, again, going to be yeah. the, this year's version of what the, the Mini NES was. Like get it while you can. Yeah. No, they've already said that they were they were increasing production. I agree with you that they said twenty eighteen was not on the table. Yeah. But they were ramping up production to yeah. meet the demand. So when I found out this news today though, I said, Oh my god, I have two uh mini NES classics. You better sell I need it to now. sell now. <laughs> Probably Do I give idea. one away to our listeners? You might be okay when they release the five. Do I NES? give one away to our our listeners? Ooh, I mean, that would be interesting. Why wouldn't you give one to me? Because you would trade it back into GameStop when an Xbox came out. You can't prove that. Die. <laughs> Can you trade those in? I doubt it. I think was... you could do a used... No. <laughs> they also said... Uh, I know you didn't put it in here. They also said that they expect the Switch to not be readily readily available this holiday season. I saw that too. Well, I, said. I, I texted I didn't John. See I see, I'm yeah. telling you, weekly I see new Nintendo Switches because John gets text messages. Not readily available? Correct. He, he said limited stock. I Which really I think Santa really needs to I'm bring ten, Tenley one. She Santa really needs to bring Tenley one. It's got to happen. <laughs> I think they're uh, what? Well, I mean, I'm sure you'd find what? one. What? If you look, would you not buy your six year old a Nintendo Switch? No. I think she, it's gonna be one of those things. Dance, dance. You won't have a problem finding them. I don't think just because you'll DJ you money. can hunt them. <laughs> yeah, you have DJ money, and you will. You have your finger on the pulse enough that I think you'll find one. The people that will be Ooh. will be the people like come December tenth that are looking for one. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, switch. good luck. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Mister, you don't have your finger on the pulse. How's that feel? Yeah, John will probably find it too. I'm Talk gonna to check my pulse roll right now. It's <laughs> That's cool. what I did. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It sucks though. Anyways. <clears throat> L.A. Noir coming to current gen hardware. Rockstar has announced that L.A. Noir will be coming to the Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Xbox One, as well as a VR experience that pulls from the original game. The updated version will release on November 14th across all systems. The Switch version features the full original game, all its DLC, and Switch specified adjustments like the optional Joy Con gyroscopic, uh, gyroscopic motion controls, as well as the HD rumble and wide over the shoulder camera angles. Really? <laughs> On PS4 and Xbox One, the game and DLC will be included, as well as enhanced visuals and lightings for new gen hardware. I was very surprised by this, but I guess money. Yeah, money. Makes some sense, I guess. <clears throat> what if Red Dead Redemption came to the Switch? <sighs> like, not the, not two, but the first one. 
I mean, I, I would. That'd be pretty I'd cool, like right? It. Yeah. This kind of opens that door for possible remakes for me. I'll say this is the one game you think of that it, like that fits for Nintendo's kind of family atmosphere a little bit because you're playing as a PI. You're not really, you know, there's not a lot of, while the game has um, crime, you know, underworld crime tones going on because it's a noir. Uh, and there's a lot of like really, you know, there's a lot of gr- like pretty graphic murders in there. There's no like, you know, going so you, to a strip club or just beating but people But there's murder, so Nintendo will be cool. It's with more it. of investigating the murder. So it's, you know, murder. If you're if you're having a shootout, it's going to be with someone who's bad. That's what know? she said. So what? that's that's cool. I'm, I am surprised, though, because like this has always been like a thing. They've uh, this game they've kind of put away for a long time. Like they they it came out. It was so, so received. And then they just kind of shelved it and never talked about it again. Had the falling out with the company that uh, more so worked on this game. than They did. I, uh, it's, it's funny that because I remember the exact same thing you do. It's so, so received. I think about L.A. Noir and I go. That was so so received. Yeah, eighty eight on Metacritic. Yeah, that's good. I it mean, is. technically that's good. I think it was one of those things like it came out. That's when, what she said. It was it was amazing <laughs> when people first saw it. I can't right now. But as people went along in like the game, mm. it, it, it's almost like how GTA Four is. Like over time, its perception. GTA Four is a great game that unfortunately was deemed as like one of the highest greatest, like highest reviewed games of all time, and then everyone kind of sat back and said like. That's just not true. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyways, uh, and then people kind of realized two years after the fact, like, we might have boosted this up a little higher than it actually was. And then, sure enough, like, you know, that's how it felt like here. People kind of came out and they were like, oh, wow, this these facial animations, we haven't quite seen something like that before. And it had a hit actor in there from Mad Men. And after the fact, when people went back to play it again, they are like, was great about this game so you know it is just, what it is. you have to I'm sure sorry. yeah so i i was kind of fact checking what you said about uh, switch, he doesn't trust me switch issues i haven't found an answer on it but i typed in reggie fisa may into google and uh-huh. you know how google at the bottom of your search says people also searched <laughs> in relation to so i've got the common oh, ones God. you can imagine it's like who is reggie from nintendo or how much does reggie fisa may make in is a year? he ready this one right at the top what race is Reggie fils That's funny. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> Nobody like, knows what it means. I've never wondered. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> what race is he? But that's yeah. just what people, that's what's on people's mind. But yes, uh, surprise they brought it back, but it's got to be a money thing. Especially with Red Dead not coming out this fall. <laughs> is, uh, is 2K hurting for money? <laughs> well, the only game they really have this fall uh, they're planning a sequel to L.A. Noir. I mean, that's just that's really all it is. I don't they're think plant, so. I, I mean, think, like, I think they're planting the seed to get that sequel some hype. You have to remember, Rockstar did not make this game. Rockstar published this game. Yeah, it was a publisher only. It was a company in Australia who made it, and they had so many issues that as soon as the game came out, they <laughs> they shut it down. They shut that studio down. There was I remember a huge playing fallout. it. It was fun. Yeah. So I, I play it again. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I just say I, things that are assertive and positive. I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, maybe they will. I, I I won't put anything past Rockstar, but obviously all their attention is on one thing right now. So it's called Red Dead 2. It's a big game. GTA 6. That will be the next thing for sure. I yeah. Uh, oof. Where are they going to go? I don't know. They'll go to LA in the war time. <laughs> <laughs> New to PUBG. Player Unknown Battlegrounds September patch brings foggy weather a new town new semi-automatic rifles, and more details on the upcoming vaulting feature. The fog will add more challenge to visibility, obviously. Uh, the new town will be located just east of Stabler. Stabler. Uh, Kenny Stabler? It's either, he either typed it wrong or I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, it's a coastal semi called Kamshiki. The new gun is a Mini-14, which is a lightweight and compact 5.56 semi Automatic marksman rifle. That's cool. Good to see. Maybe, uh, I think they said by the end of this year, they hope the PC will be the final version uh, by the end of this be, year. Be up to final version. Yeah, like go. retail, they'll put it out for 60 bucks. We'll see. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's the truth. The same with Xbox, but that's their goal. Xbox. The Xbox is going to be in preview, I'm sure, for a good little while. Yeah. Uh, 
Finally. I'll, I'll tell you this. It will be the world, worldwide preview edition. First edition. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> Console only. <laughs> preview version. <laughs> world premiere. Mere. Mere. Finally this week. Uh, finally this week. John's too busy fact checking me to groan. I'm looking at the show notes. Oh. Dick. <laughs> You're the dick who was Richard. Guys, you were Richarding my my It's F and Richard, okay? <laughs> Tighten yeah, up. We See got censorships and stuff we gotta we got worry about. JA he's saying this week. Ugh. Who's J A? Jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's twice I tried to get my <laughs> microphone just shrink. <laughs> Sea of Thieves lends tech to PUBG. Player Unknown Battlegrounds will improve the look of its water thanks to Sea of Thieves. Creator Brendan Green revealed that the popular online battle royale game will now be using Rare's Great Water Tech in the Sea of Thieves thanks to Blue Hole Incorporated's partnership with Microsoft. Blue Hole. Don't you love uh, that? Blue Hole. Yeah. With Microsoft to publish the game on Xbox One. Quote, Rare has said they love the game and they played a lot, but oh, your water. I mean, our water is not very good, but Rare has great water tech. They said, we should share some of that knowledge. That's a great thing about being part of a network of studios. That's just the invaluable, or that's just invaluable because their water is great. You're going to love it. It's huge water. It's like, that's the greatest water man, you've ever had. Their water is great. You're going to be so I, happy with this water. I do the think best, it's the best water you've ever had in a game. I do think this is a it's cool story that I hope more of like this happens. I want to. I want to know this though. Does that mean if it goes to PS4, they have to make different water for it? <laughs> <laughs> what do we do with the water? Oh, <laughs> uh, we ready to, to wrap this up? Never. No. But sure. Okay. I mean, I'll tell you I did. Destiny 2 and Sonic hey, is the title of this email. And it's from RJ. He writes in and says... How do you spell that? Is there a 3 after it? No. Oh. And not a D2. Wait, or, or a, a G. D. Not a G. I was going to say RJ uh, D2. R- what? That's a DJ. Get out. And give me all no, your no, no, stuff. No. I was I was on a completely different level. Yep. Okay. Uh, I meant to email Die? a few weeks back and forgot. I was listening to your Sonic episode and heard how you... Th- how you three thought the 3D versions were terrible, but I remember growing up and even now how I enjoy the gameplay of Sonic Adventure 2 and don't remember hearing you guys bring it up. How did you guys like it? I'll be honest, I never played it. Um, <laughs> I know John didn't play it. I know I didn't. So. Yeah. Also, being as you only have one Destiny fan, I will happily non-special guest star as the support for Destiny. Winky face. Uh, too late. <laughs> winky uh, face. Winky face, yes. Uh, love what you guys do. Keep up the great work, RJ. Well, I Thanks, mean, he's, he's right about... I mean, I played Sonic Colors, mm-hmm. and, I, and, I've, and I always talk about Sonic Colors. That was a good 3D, mar- um, <laughs> 3D Sonic for the Wii. <laughs> um, got pretty good accolades for it, too. Yeah. So, it was a pretty good one. It's, uh, um, that's all I got. Yeah. I, I think like when I talk about the 3Ds, a lot of them, um, it's just that they never quite hit like what oh. people, they, they never were able to em, uh, emulate e- emulate what the classic Sonics did that people loved. And that was their problem like as far as people are concerned. It's not to say they're bad or there are no good games because obviously someone's going to do it at least decent if not uh, capable. Uh, but on the other hand, I'd never heard anyone talk about 3D Sonic, say, the way Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 are talked about as far as classics. That is true. It's good. That's final. Head bob. That's it. That is it. I, uh, you know what's also it? What? Next week we're going to finally announce our winner. <laughs> so see all you people who doubted. What if something comes up? What if we don't <laughs> understand and see why you, why you, why are you see, announcing that, this right folks, now? That's folks. That is, that is a, a behind the yeah. scenes Richard that came to light. <laughs> Old JA over there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We didn't, um, I promise you we didn't forget. People reached out on, uh, the old Twitters. Uh, it's not of, like we took their money. No, they were just like, hey, <laughs> are you guys going to announce a winner? Or we just, did we dream that? The big thing I noticed, uh, I can explain Wake this up. a little bit. The big thing I noticed just looking at the, the full emails that we got for the contest, there definitely seemed to be a slate towards FIFA. So I didn't want to 
say like, or we didn't want to say like, hey, here's your winner. And by the way, you got about three weeks, <laughs> you know, because we're, we're going to buy this. We're going to get you a code and then we're going to, you know, or we're going to ask you what you want. We're going to get you a code and then we're going to email it to you. Yeah. So, you know, it will and, be there for you. And, and I told you that people like the soccer, Chris. They do like the soccer. It's the most popular sport in the world, unfortunately. The, then you went, Richard, because of one word. Yeah. You could have just left that statement alone. You I could hope been, we get a letter from Richard next week. He's like, look, you guys are using my name. Uh, it's copywritten, so don't copy me. First off is <laughs> dick. <laughs> Check this out. You could have said, hey, I'm happy that Tottenham won this week, but you didn't. Uh, no. All you care about is the stupid Alabama, huh? Roll Tide. Roll Tide. See, I can't not say it back to him. <laughs> See? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I'm ready to get out of here. Are you ready to get out of here? I'm ready to get out of here. Let's do this. This has been episode 120 of Weekly Game Chat. If you like the show, subscribe to us on iTunes or whatever listening service you choose. If they've got a rating system or some sort of review system, drop us a review. If you're like me, you probably never pay attention to that rating system. But in this case, please do. Do us a favor. How many ratings? If you've already, if you've already rated us, go into your, to your loved one's rooms. (laughs) Grab their phones, this is creepy open already. it up, what? and tell them that they have to give us a rating. And then make them tell them that all their friends, they need to give us a rating. And so on and so on. And if you do that, we'll be gods. Because you can only do that 14 times, I think, before uh, eventually we run out of people on the planet. Um, uh, if you want to write in your comments or concerns, we didn't say this before, but write them into weeklygameschat at gmail.com. Or you can find us on the social medias, the Facebooks. Facebook.com slash Weekly Game Chat or Twitter.com slash Weekly Game Chat. You can find all of our episodes on there. Is that how that works? Yeah, our episodes are posted there. Yeah. If you want a quick little way to go to our our little web page that has web browsing versions of the episode, you can see them all there along with little things that Sean puts up. If you write on the Facebooks, we, we usually always chime in there. So, yeah, those are out there. Maybe <laughs> we'll have something new for you soon. Hmm. Wonder what that's Ooh, about. Oh, what, 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 what? I don't know. What um, was that? A, what did we just tease? Did we do a radio tease? <laughs> Maybe we'll see. <laughs> it could be nothing. Um, until next time, I will simply say, "Game on, John." Game on, Chris. Game on, John. Game on, Chris. <laughs> Game on, John. Jeez. Game on, John. Your mom's box. Peace out, everybody. Bye, bye. Cool.